only you that can determine this fact. But from the look of this, if I'm looking at it, and you want me to tell you from what I'm looking at, this thing is dead. But I know that with you, it is possible that this dry bones will come alive. And the Spirit of God came upon the dry bones, and everything came together. The flesh came upon it, and there was life in the dry bones. So the Spirit that makes alive, that's what we're talking about. And the Holy Spirit is the only one that knows the thoughts of God and reveals the thoughts of God. If you read all through the Old Testament, you will see that there's nobody God uses without first throwing his spirit upon the person. And the Bible will tell you, tell us, and the Spirit of God came upon, and the Spirit of God came upon, the Spirit of excellence. The Spirit that gives the ability to do what ordinarily you will not be able to do, that you find impossible. When the angel appeared unto Gideon, he looked at him, when he said, you are going to say, you will say, me? My clan, the wicked, my very self, what can I do? But because the Spirit of God came upon him, he was able to do what he thought he couldn't do. The Spirit of God, when the Spirit of God comes into man, the man becomes an extraordinary person, no more an ordinary person, but an extraordinary person. That's when you see that you have the ability to do, the ability to do what ordinarily you would not be able to do. The Spirit that makes difference. Hallelujah. And Jesus told the disciples, it is better for me to go, because if I don't go, this spirit will not come. The counselor will not come. The Holy Spirit will not come. But when I leave, my Father will send the spirit to you. The spirit of truth that will lead you into all truth. That will teach you all those things that you do not know. That will give you an understanding of what you don't know. That will open your heart You'll be able to discern. You'll be able to discern things. You'll be able to discern your environment. The spirits of discernment. That is the spirit that we're talking about. But then the disciples they couldn't understand. But he told them, when the spirit actually comes, you will understand what I'm talking about. The spirit that makes the difference. That is the spirit of the most high God that we're talking about. The spirit of God. Let's read the book of Exodus chapter 31. Verse 3, if you are here, please quickly read. Exodus 31, verse 3. There is nothing that succeeds in life except what the Holy Spirit does. Whatever the Holy Spirit does succeeds. But anything outside it, there is no success. Because in the spirit of success itself, it brings success and prosperity. Are we there? Exodus 31, 3. Let somebody read fast. I am filled with the Spirit of God. Giving him great wisdom. Giving him what? Great wisdom. Great wisdom. Intelligence. Intelligence. And skill. And skill. All kind of craft. All kind of craft. I have filled him. God called this man to assist. And he said, don't worry. I have filled him already with what? With my spirit. The Spirit of God. And I have given him the ability to do. Can we have another version? Exodus 31, please. And I have filled him with my spirit. I have given him understanding. I have given him understanding. Skill. Skill. And ability for every kind of artistic work. And ability for every kind of artistic work. The spirit that gives ability to do what you cannot do. Or what you can do to make you prosper in what you can do. To make you do it better. So if you hold on the whole testament when God wants to use anybody, he first of all pour his spirit upon that person. Even when they want to prophesy, and you hear that the spirit of God came upon Isaiah, came upon Jeremiah, and then they can give the message of God. They can pour out the heart of God when the spirit of God comes upon them. And the spirit of God came upon Saul, and he could prophesy. And the moment the spirit of God left him, he became Ordinary, ordinary again. And all through until he died, he became ordinary and could not do anything great. Why? Because the Spirit of God left. But as long as the Spirit of God is still in man, there will be a difference. There will be the ability to do what is right. There will be the ability to do what is righteous. There will be the ability to tell the heart of God. 
And then in the New Testament, when Jesus Christ became the Bible that the Spirit of God, when he was being baptized, the heavens opened and the Spirit of God came upon him like a dew. And then he told the disciples, when the Spirit comes, when I go, I will now send you my Holy Spirit that will feed you and will teach you all things. Those things that you do not know. But before then, already the book of Joel already promised that. That the Spirit of God will be poured upon all flesh. Then in the Old Testament, before this prophecy, God only picks the people that he wants to use and pour his spirit upon them and he used them. He used them. But then in Joel, he said, I'm going to pour my spirit upon all flesh. All, not just one. Both maid, slave, everyone, man, woman, adult, children. I'm going to pour my spirit upon all men. And then the ability to do what they have not been doing before will come upon them. Bring grace, prophesy, do great works. That is what the Spirit of God does. Hallelujah. So let's go to the book of John chapter 2. John chapter 2. How can the Spirit of God come? You know, David understood very well the meaning of the Spirit. And he told God in the book of uh, Psalm 51, verse 11, he said, Take not your Holy Spirit from me. He said, Cast me not away from your presence, O God, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Because he knew very well that without the Spirit of God, he would become ordinary. He would go back to his bed, to the desert, bed being a shepherd boy. And he quickly told God when he sinned, he said, God, please have mercy on me, forgive me. Cast me not away from your presence. Take not your Holy Spirit from me. Because he had that deep understanding that he is at lack because the Spirit of God is upon him. Hallelujah. So, why, how can we have the Spirit? We were told the last week that prayer, true prayer. But let's see, how can we have the Spirit of God? Are we there in joy? Let's see verse 15. Verse 15, are we there? Let's read from verse 12. That is why the Lord says, Turn to me now while there is time. Give me your heart. Come with fasting, weeping, and mourning. Don't tear your clothing in your grief, but tear your heart instead. Return to the Lord your God, for he is merciful and compassionate. Slow to get angry and filled with unfailing love. Let's be presented again. He said, don't tear your clothing in your grief, but tear your heart instead with penitence. Can we have another version of that? Verse 13. Verse 13, please. So render your heart. So render your heart. And not your garment. And not your garment. Return to the Lord your God. Return to the Lord your God. So rend your heart. And not your garment. And return to the Lord your God. When we're talking about returning, that is at the particular time the person has gone away, now you are going back to his repentance. Because the Spirit of God will not come into the life of a sinner. As many as have not come to the Lord, as many as have not changed their heart, as many as have not lived in darkness for life, there's no way the Spirit of God can come in. And yet he said, Went to your heart and not your garment, and return to the Lord your God, for he is merciful and compassionate. Then from verse 15, now said, Blow the ground on in Jerusalem, announce a time of fasting, call the people together for a solemn meeting. Fasting, prayer. If you read it down, you now say, Then, then, this is what is going to happen. Then, if you read it down from that place, then the Lord will now pour his spirit. But first, bend your heart, return to your God. Because the Spirit of God cannot be poured, cannot come upon a sinner. He cannot feel a sinner. The Lord will expect that the heart will be what? Clean up. So that the Spirit of God can dwell in them. Let's see John chapter 14. John 14. John 14, 15, please. We are there. If you love me, you will obey my commandments. Go on. I will ask the Father. 
I will ask the Father. And if and he will give you another helper. Another helper. Who will stay with you forever? Who will stay with you forever? If you love me, you will obey my commandment. I will now tell my father to send a helper who will stay with you forever. But the first thing is for you to what? Love me. Then the second one is what? Obey my commandments. Before my father can now send the helper, the Holy Spirit to you. If you love me, you will obey my commandments. Then I will talk to my father. I will talk to my father and he will send the helper to you. Go on. It is the Spirit who reveals the truth about God. Who reveals the truth about God? That is the Holy Spirit. Who reveals the truth about God? The world cannot receive it. The world cannot receive it. Because it cannot see him. Because it cannot see him. It does not understand him. Yes. Or know him. Or know him. But you know him. But you know him. Because he remains with you. Because he remains with you. And he is in you. When I go, when I go, you will not be left all alone. You will not be left all alone. Jesus promised them here. When I go, you will not be left alone. I will come back to you. I will come back to you. Amen. Praise the Lord. You will not be left alone. But the first thing is for you to first of all do what? Went to your what? Act. Repentance. We talk to who? God. Now love God and obey Him. Then I will tell my Father who will send us the Holy Spirit that you need to dwell. To be an helper. The Spirit of truth, the Spirit of righteousness that will teach you so many things that you don't even know. The Spirit that will lead you into the truth of life. He said you don't know him, the world they don't understand him. But it's with you, he's living in you. So as Christians, the Holy Spirit is living in us, but it needs to be activated. In some people, it's not alive, it's not doing anything. Because they don't understand that the Holy Spirit is in them. And they told the disciples, it's in you, it's with you. And then they promised them, don't worry. When it comes, you'll be able to do great works. And look at what happened in the book of Acts chapter 2 when the Holy Spirit came upon them. The same disciples that were running away when Jesus was crucified, that were afraid and they could not even show their faith, that they would deny and said, No, we don't even know him. Peter denied him. They were the same people that now came together and could preach, they could teach, they could face anybody and teach and talk about this Jesus Christ. Why? Because the Holy Spirit came upon them. They received power. So the Holy Spirit is the Spirit that gives what? Power and authority. Boldness. Confidence. The Spirit of God in the life of man is something more than gold. So precious. Because it is life. The Spirit of God itself is life. People with the Holy Spirit in them that activate that Spirit in them and sees the Holy Spirit as and you are, as a human, just to see if as it is beside you, they are related to the Holy Spirit, they understand the operations of the Holy Spirit, that he is life. Because it's the spirit of the truth. He's the spirit that quickly convicts you of your sins, of your guilt. He does not give you peace. The moment you walk out of the presence of God, he quickly tells you, you are out. But you know, because so many people have, they don't have the spirit in them. It is, you know, sin becomes a normal way of Life. Nothing to convict them of their self, of their guilt. Nothing to tell them that look, this is wrong. They have silenced the spirit of God in them. They have quenched the Holy Spirit. They have quenched the fire in them. So the Holy Spirit is the spirit that brings power and authority and confidence and boldness. The same that they gave unto the disciples. After he descended upon them, on the day of Pentecost, they could face any blood. But before then, before then, they went back and fishing. Before then, they were afraid to say, yes, we know him. Before then, they were afraid to say, we have, we have never met Jesus Christ. But after the Holy Spirit came upon them, everything changed. So the Holy Spirit in the life of a Christian brings about a change. A change, a change in life, a change in thoughts, a change in everything. It brings the fear.
fear of God in you, that you recognize God, you understand God, and you fear Him. You respect Him. As many Christians as are without the fear of God, they are still without the Holy Spirit. Or the Holy Spirit in them, they are not activated. If you are not still afraid to go into one sin or the other, if you still commit sin intentionally, that this is in your heart, and you just go ahead and do it, you know that it is wrong and you still go ahead and do it. It is because you don't have the Spirit of God in you. You don't have it. If you have it, you don't sin intentionally. No. You can run into it by mistake. But you don't do it intentionally. You don't know that this thing is wrong and you keep doing it. Then you don't have the Spirit of God in you. Because the Spirit of God in you brings the fear of God. Because it will keep telling you, no, 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 no. You won't even have peace within you. And before you know it, you want to obey. You quickly want to obey. You find your footing. You find your that saying, yes, I cannot do this answer. And how can I do this and just displease my God and sin against God? Why? You can say that because the Holy Spirit is in you. It's the Holy Spirit that fills you. See it. Hallelujah. But when you don't have him, sin becomes a normal thing of life. It does not matter how many people tell you that sin is wrong. It does not matter how many times you have heard about it. You don't care. You don't care. Because you don't, you, you don't care. The Holy Spirit wants you to please God. But when you don't have him, you don't want to please him. You are not concerned. You are not bothered if God is pleased with me or not. You are not bothered. What you care about is, am I pleased with myself? Am I comfortable doing this? You find it comfortable doing evil when the Holy Spirit has departed from you. That was what happened to Saul. The Spirit of God departed from him. And the only thing that he continued to do is to look and continue to want after David, wanting to take away his life. You find it very easy to do evil the moment the Holy Spirit is out of your life. So Christians will need to check our life. If you know that you find it the category of those that find it very easy to compromise, to support evil, to do anything that you don't do and say, I'm here, everybody is doing it, what is wrong with it? Then, quickly check your life, the Holy Spirit has departed. The Holy Spirit is out. The Holy Spirit departed from Saul, and the only thing that he talked about is evil, evil, killing priests, killing men of God, ministers of God. Kill them, kill, why have their generations killed all the family? Kill the Levites that assisted David. Why? Because the Spirit of God is out of him. But when the Spirit of God was still there in him, he respected all the labor, the priests, he respected Samuel. He honored him. But the moment he departed, that was Saul. The same thing happened to Samson. When the Spirit of God was in him, he could do and do. He could destroy his enemies. He could pull out the gates of the Philistines and take it back to the enemies. But the moment the head was off and the power left him, that was all. He died with his enemies. When the Spirit of God leaves man, man becomes an ordinary person. Man becomes an ordinary person. Jesus never started any work until the Spirit of God came upon him. And he said, The Spirit of God is upon me. He has anointed me. God has anointed me to do. Because he has anointed me to do. For four, the Spirit of God is upon me. So the spirit of the God is the spirit of excellence. The spirit that brings about excellence. The ability to do. So if man is still struggling with sin, it simply means the spirit of God is not there yet. You are still struggling with one thing or the other. Or you still find it is you know, very easy to just sleep in and do whatever you want to do and still come out of it. You know, you live it this way, you live it that way. You are not consistent with God. It is because the spirit of God is not there. So you need to find out. Where have I lost him? And how can I bring him back? Or have I grieved him? Because the Bible says, don't, don't, don't grieve the Spirit of God in you. Or have I grieved him? Because he can be grieved. And he can also leave when he's grieved. So for excellent resolve and for excellent Christian life, we need the Spirit of God. For perfection and for resolve as Christians, we need the Spirit of God. We need the Spirit of God. By the grace of God, as for the next week, we will talk about relationship with the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit. We will talk about relationship, how we can 
have the Holy Spirit and the relationship and the functions of the Spirit of God. And the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Bless us on our feet and just pray this morning. And Father, fill me up with the Holy Spirit. Lord, fill me up with your Holy Spirit. Father, fill me up with your Holy Spirit. 